back to New York Islanders hockey here on NHL 19's franchise mode. We are here in year number two, and if you watched the last one, we beat the Tampa Bay Lightning in somehow, some way, a convincing fashion. It only took five games. We lost game number one on their home ice. Got shut out four to one. From there, took care of business two to one in overtime, four to two at home, three to one at home, back on the road for a one nothing shutout in game number five. So we are here in round number two. We're going up against the Toronto Maple Leafs and your former legend captain draft drafted number one overall. John Tavares. Let's go ahead and look at Toronto's lines. You know what our lineup looks like. Let's take a look at Toronto. I can't believe we're going up against the Maple Leafs in round number two. There he is, the big man on the first line, John Tavares. Let's see what he's done in Toronto. So last year, year number one, 73 points, had 41 goals, but this year, I believe, he led the league in goals with 59, had 87 points on the year. What a stud. What a stud there in Toronto. He's playing alongside of Willie Nylander and Mitch Marner, two beasts, 88 overall for both of them, and a 91 Tavares. But look at their second line. Centered by, you know him, Austin Matthews. They got Marlowe on the left wing. Audrey on the right wing. <clears throat> Malo, 40 years old. He's got three goals so far in these playoffs in four games. Looks like they uh, dealt with uh, whoever they matched up against with in four games straight. Third line looks okay. They got Kapanen, uh, Gucciet, who is injured, but he's in the lineup. That's weird. Um... He looks a little uh, low to be there on their third line, but Hyman, I think he's an 83 overall, uh, really. Uh, and then Grunstrom, Brown, and Cracknell doesn't look any different, really, from our th fourth line. Um, I mean, their top line is just full of studs. And their second line is decent, but Matthews makes it, you know, pretty darn good. Um, they have, I would say, a little bit better depth than us, uh, but overall offensive power, they've definitely got us beat uh, by that first line alone. Uh, their defensive core, they've got a, a bona fide top two overall defenseman, just like Tampa had in Morgan Riley here. Um, I don't think he's better as good overall, you know, all around as Hedman, um, but he he's not really a goal scoring threat. He does get a lot of assists. So I shouldn't worry about too much of their offense coming from the back end. Looks like he's paired up with Nikita Zaitsev. Uh, Liljegren is in there. Borgman, Nielsen. So their bottom six. Actually, their, their second two pairings aren't all that strong. I think we have them beat there. Overall, I would give a slight edge to us, to be honest, even with their 90 overall, Morgan Riley. In, in net, goaltenders, this is someone that we traded to Toronto, Ian Scott. We traded him at the draft, if I recall correctly. Um... So he played in 21 games in the NHL this season. Looks like he was their backup. So he did grow over the course of the offseason. He went 11-7-2. His stats aren't the greatest, but he had a good record because he was playing in front of a good team. Um, so he has three games played in the AHL playoffs. So nothing in the NHL. I doubt he's going to get any starts. They've got Frederick Anderson, an 88 overall elite goaltender. Uh, looks like he dealt with uh, the other team pretty well. Those stats are really looking good. So, um, 
you know, same thing with the first round at this point, boys. We're playing with house money. You know, this is just extra bonus. We get playoff hockey. We're in the second round, for God's sakes. Um, so, uh, looking at, um, you know, really quickly, look at the playoff tree. So the remaining teams in the West is Minnesota versus Dallas, and then Anaheim up against the Edmonton Oilers, and Pittsburgh up against Columbus, and Toronto versus your New York Islanders. And it looks like Toronto's the only team that went 4-0 in the first round. Great. Um, yeah, so we'll just, you know, it is what it is. We'll just see what our boys can do here. I'm looking... Honestly, I'm just looking for competitiveness at this point. We should be okay to get um, Pelic back in the lineup. Uh, he did get injured in the last couple of games there against uh, Tampa Bay. So we're going to sub out Sebastian Aho. We're going to get Pelic back in there. He's had a great season, so there's no reason why we shouldn't get him back in there. Very nice, very nice. All right, so uh, let's not waste any more time. Let's simulate the first game here. We're on the road once again, us being the wildcard team here in Toronto. Let's see what our first period looks like on the road in round number two. And it's a one nothing Toronto lead. What was I just saying about him not scoring goals? Morgan Riley gets one on Robin Lehner from the boards in the high slot. Okay, but we're right there in shots. It's still close. Second period. Oof. Two more goals. Nikita Zaitsev gets a goal. That's weird. And Austin Matthews with the dagger to make it a 3 nothing lead here going into the third. So we'll real-time sim. So it's a looking like a little bit of deja vu here after we lost 4 nothing to Tampa in game one of round one. There's John Tavares scoring a goal against his former team in round number two. First time he's ever had to face the Islanders in the playoffs. Nazem Kadri gets one final say and makes it a 5 to nothing shelling against the Islanders. So, I mean, the last the only thing that gives me hope, the last time we were in this spot, we won four straight games. I mean, 5 nothing is just brutal. Um, continue. Bridgeport lost all three of their playoff games, so they got bounced out pretty convincingly. Okay, game number two. Let's see what we can do here. I just want us to be competitive. More competitive than five to nothing losses. Alright, so first period here in game number two on the road. Once again, it's a one nothing lead for the Maple Leafs as Austin Matthews gets his second of the series. Shots are tied up at nine apiece. Let's see, period number two. And we tie up the game. Anthony Beauvale gets his second of the playoffs. His second career, I believe, playoff NHL goal. So we finally break through Frederick Anderson. Nice shot there from the face-off circle. And uh, shots are pretty close, 19 to 17 in favor of the Leafs. But let's have a good third period here, boys. Let's get on the board. We've broken through. Big penalty kill. Oh, my gosh, we kill it off. There was a couple of penalties there. Come on, boys. Let's get a little bit more offense going. Another power play. A power play for us. Can we score? No. Under five minutes to go. And Hosang gets a goal. That's his second of the playoffs. And the Islanders take game number two. How do you like them apples? Wow. What a steal of a game. Beauvale and Josh Hosang stepping up. The young kid stepping up for the Islanders. Robin Lehner gets the number one star after letting just one goal slip by him. Beauvale with two points. Same for Jeff Skinner. Good win. Good, good win for the Islanders. Awesome. So, let's uh, go ahead up to game number three here. We took one in Toronto. That's all I wanted for us to do. Last time against Tampa, we did it. We've done it once again here in Toronto. So, let's get home ice. Let's show our fans 
what we can do against these Maple Leafs. Let's show the fans what John Tavares walked away from. Period number one. And it's nothing, nothing. Both goaltenders are going head to head. They're both playing their best hockey of the year. Eight to six shots in favor of the Maple Leafs. But that's okay. We've got heart and soul here in New York. Period number two. Oof. Period goes to Toronto as they get a Zach Hyman goal on Laner right towards the blue line. And we have a distinct shot advantage here, so it looks like we really started pouring on. Let's have another good third period here, boys. Home fans, let's do it. Let's show them what we got here. Let's get a goal. Ethan Lyons, his third goal of the playoffs. Very nice from the high slot there. Tie game. Anything can happen. Under 10 minutes to go. Last time we had a late goal. Toronto with a long power play. Oh my gosh, we kill it off. And we're going to overtime. So the last time we went to overtime, we won it. Let's see if we can be two for two in overtime. We're on home ice. Shots are all evened up. Huge penalty kill at the end of that period. Let's see if we can carry some momentum into overtime. And we cannot. Toronto will take it off the stick of Nazem Kadri right from the boards. And the series has a Toronto advantage of two games to one. Good fought game. That's what I wanted. I wanted competitive, low-scoring affair, back-to-back two-to-one games. Um, really looking for a strong offensive performance here in game number four. Let's uh, let's get this game in the series tied up here. We're on home ice. Game four. Let's have a better offensive output. Here we go. First period, and that's what I was just saying we needed. Andreoff on the fourth line gets one. Jeff Skinner and Matt Martin. So the depth, a couple of depth guys scoring, and Jeff Skinner pots one from center ice, right, basically. That was a gimme goal. Okay. Second period. Oh my goodness gracious. We get one to make it 4 nothing. Jeff Skinner's second of the game, but Toronto comes by with three goals of their own to make it a f only a 4-3 to three lead. Heading into period number three, John Tavares gets his second against us. Mitch Marner gets one, and their fourth liner, Grunstrom, gets one as well. Slowing the simulation down. Oh my goodness, a first 30-second goal by Willie Nylander ties it up. Power play for Toronto. We kill it off. Come on, boys. John Tavares again, a second goal of the game. Oh, don't let it fall away. Tavares, a hat trick. So he's showing us what we're missing. That sucks. And a late empty netter by Austin Matthews. That's just a bad, terrible game. Terrible game from us. I mean, the first period, everything's going right. To start the second period, we're looking good. Three straight goals for them, and then another four goals. Seven straight goals for the Maple Leafs. We knew, we, they, we knew that they were capable of that. We finally get some goal scoring, and they just turn on the Jets and go. And now it's 3-1 to one series. Lead for Toronto. They are back on home ice. Uh, it's really unfortunate that we had to do that in front of our home fans. I'd like to give our fans another chance at home to, to, cheer, to cheer us on. Let's see on the road to see if we can get a win here. First period, and another goal for Toronto in the first period. They are just lights out. Connor Brown, so another depth goal for them. Close in shots once again, though. Let's get the second period here. Second period, we get one to tie it up by Kunakel, but Patty Marlowe on the second line gets one on Laner. Third period, we're down by one. Series is on the line here. Can the Islanders show some grit? Jeff Skinner gets one. He's feeling it right now in this round. It's another goal for him. Come on, boys. We know we have more in the tank. We know we want to show our fans we're better than what we were in that last game. Ethan Lyons 
right in front of the net. That's going to be a dagger, and that's a game-winning goal there from the rookie. Oh, my goodness. I knew we had more to show. Robin Lehner gets the first star for another time. Ethan Lyons, game-winning goal, gets the second star of the game. I knew we had more to show. I knew we had more to show our fans. That's a huge, huge win there from your New York Islanders. Come from behind win. So we're back on home ice. The last time we were here, we lost 7-4 after they scored. Seven straight after we scored the first four goals of the game. Come on, boys. Let's show the fans one more time. Just one more time that we're good. First period here on home ice. Another first period goal for the Maple Leafs. Mitch Marner gets one on Robin Lehner. We have an advantage in shots. Come on, boys. Keep pouring the shots on. Get them through. Second period. No goals. It's a quiet second period. Toronto now leading in shots. They've got a little bit of momentum here in the third period. Come on, boys. Let's continue to show grit. Let's get some offense here in the third period. A no. Another Morgan Riley goal. Patrick Marlowe makes it 3 nothing. This game's out of reach. Oh, boys. Really fell apart here in the third period again. Couple of power plays, nothing happens. And the clock is going to wind down. And we are out of the playoffs. A 3 to nothing shutout on home ice to Toronto. It's really unfortunate. Uh, we did get two wins, though, in the second round. So we go to game six in round number two, in year number two, I mean, you just... I really hope we can make it a little bit more competitive. That 7-4 game cost us the series, but it looks like Anaheim and Minnesota are going at it in the conference final, and Toronto goes up against Pittsburgh. Really unfortunate. We'll take a look at points here. Before we head out of here, player stats. Let's take a look at forwards first. Toronto, Toronto really tore us up here. But four goals for Skinner. He had seven points. Beauvalet looked pretty good. Ethan Loins in his first ever playoff, uh, playoff uh, appearance had four goals in 11 games. Can't complain about that. Guys up to an 86 overall. Very, very nice. Hosting. Barzell, a little quiet. Uh, only four points in 11 games. Bailey, only two points. He was kind of quiet as well. Andrew Ladd, the only Islander forward without a point. Defensively, you know, not too bad. Pelic ended up being a minus four. He really got torn up in that Toronto series. Two points for Strawman. Three points for Letty. Oh, man. And goaltenders, Robin Lehner. Six, four, and one. Had one shutout. The stats are still good. He just continues to shine in an Islanders uniform. Just really unfortunate that... Um, really unfortunate that he could not have a good game there in game, what was that, game number four? He lost seven of four. Really just got away from the whole team, Laner included. Just got away from us. Then that cost us the series. Alright, well, nothing to do now but to simulate up to the draft. Uh, either way, year two is a massive success. Just a complete, massive success. A, we make the playoffs. B, we dealt with Tampa in round one, and we beat them in five games. And we took the Toronto Maple Leafs to six games in round number two. Nothing but uh, high praises for this club. 
Uh, let's see who ends up winning the cup. And it is, in fact, Toronto. So say what you want, but we lost against the best team in the league. They won the Stanley Cup. And the Grand Rapids Griffins, that's Detroit's farm team, they win the Calder. So, like I said, nothing to complain about here. Really had a strong year number two. So here's the results of the draft lottery. Washington is going to get the number one overall pick. But that Boston Bruins pick that we had ends up being number seven. So we have a top ten pick once again. Uh, and we go to playoff round two, so nothing but high praises there. We do not have our own pick, but we do have Buffalo's pick. Um, and the good news about that is we made it farther in the playoffs than Buffalo did. They lost in the first round, so hopefully their pick is 17, 18, 19, something like that. Um, so either way, we made the right choice in trading our pick away to go on a run. That was part of the trade that brought us Anton Strawman. Should hit OK for now. Uh, retired players, sure, why not? Let's take a look. Let's go down to New York here. So we haven't lost anybody, which means Andrew Ladd is still there, Zeno Chara is still there, I doubt any goalies retired. Dominic Moore has become a scout. Okay. So we are up at the draft here. Let's just take a look at the draft class before we end this off to see what we're looking like right now. So a franchise defenseman looks like he's going to go number one to Washington. Uh, we are down at number seven. So we're right in this area. Unfortunately, my scouts did not do the best job. Uh, this guy is an elite defenseman, which I don't... I mean... I know I have defensive top four process, but I don't have an elite defensive prospect medium. I have that uh, low elite guy, the gem, that we drafted last year in like the fourth or fifth round or something. Um, I would have liked another forward, but I just don't know... somewhere in here I just don't know both of these guys are defensemen this is a center two way forward he's a top six center I would have liked another forward Maybe I'll go after that center. I doubt this guy will drop to me. Miko Koivoi. Koivu. Small kid. We'll have to really dive into that when we uh, do the draft in the next one. I mean, there's a couple of options there, but. Quite a few kids there that I don't know anything about, which kind of scares me. But we'll have to save that for the next time. Thank you all for watching. 
next episode we will do the draft do the resign stage do the free agency and we'll get all the way up to preseason so that'll do it for this one thank you all for watching and uh, we'll see you next time